When you think Disney, you think catchy songs and relatable heroes. But one more thing comes to mind, and that is Disney villains. They are essential to Disney's success, and without them, sometimes Disney's downfall. In the vast realm of Disney villains, there's one character who stands head and shoulders above the rest, both in terms of his cunningness and his captivating charisma. Scar, the sly antagonist from Disney's The Lion King, is the quintessential embodiment of what makes a truly perfect villain. From his razor-sharp wit, Machiavelli schemes, and a dark allure that draws us in even as we despise his actions, Scar reigns supreme as the ultimate Disney villain. In the high-stakes world of cinema, villains have a common Achilles heel. They're notorious for their inability to secure the ultimate win. Like clockwork, they carefully plot, strive to vanquish the hero, and in the end, their grand schemes unravel in spectacular fashion. It's an age-old tale, not confined to the realm of Disney enchantment, but woven into the fabric of storytelling across genres. However, there are some rare cases when the villain actually emerges victorious. Even if the victory is temporary, the victories they achieve have dire consequences for the hero. More importantly, even when the villain eventually loses, the hero has to deal with what the villain did accomplish. No matter how the hero wins, the villain still takes something that can be considered a permanent victory. Scar is one of these villains, as his transgressions towards the hero literally made him king of Pride Rock. From day one, Scar had a singular goal that glittered brighter than Simba's fur in the African sun, to dethrone his regal older brother, the almighty Mufasa, and make Pride Rock his personal playground. Now sure, wanting to wear a crown is a classic villain trope, but here's where Scar breaks the mold. Unlike his bumbling, plot-fumbling counterparts, he actually pulled it off. That's right, Scar pulled off the villainous equivalent of winning the lottery. He offed Mufasa, sent young Simba packing into self-imposed exile, and claimed the throne with a smirk so sinister it could make hyenas tremble. What's more, he didn't just get what he wanted, he got it all for many years. While Simba was out there gallivanting with Timon and Pumbaa, singing Hakuna Matata and living the world free dream, Scar was living the high life as the king of Pride Rock, basking in the spotlight of his wicked success. Now, I'm well aware that his cunning plan originally aimed to bring about Simba's demise. However, the young cub harbored no inkling of ambition to reclaim his rightful throne from the clutches of the devious Scar. This in turn granted the malevolent lion a dominion rule over the Pride Lands, as the grand tapestry of the Lion King. <laughs> the Lion King. His final act. <laughs> as the grand tapestry of the Lion King unfurled its final act, it laid bare Scar's astonishing ineptitude as a ruler, rendering him a mere shadow in comparison to the regal Mufasa. He exhibited scant concern for the well-being of his fellow lions, his sole obsession being the title of king. His leadership teetered on the precipice of transforming the Pride Lands into a desolate wasteland, an outcome not scripted within his mischievous scheme, yet an inescapable truth nonetheless. While diving into Disney's villains gallery, we find characters like the cunning Hades, who momentarily wrestled the throne from the mighty Zeus, even if only for a mere 60 seconds, leaving the divine order unscathed. Hades, however, refrained from taking a life. Now contrast this with the malevolence of Scar, who orchestrated the murder of his own brother, wrenching away Mufasa's royal mantle, and seizing the throne in a rebellion that cast its shadow over the kingdom for a span of years. Scar's insatiable greed concealed a deeply rooted, intensely personal vendetta. His seething jealousy of Mufasa simmered throughout the narrative an envy-fueled fire that blazed within him. Scar nursed an unshakable sense of entitlement to the throne, a conviction that drove him to orchestrate a sinister conspiracy with the hyenas to bring about the demise of his own brother and innocent nephew. Upon realizing his twisted ambition and becoming king, Scar reveled momentarily in his newfound power. However, as the curtain fell on his reign, his grip on sanity began to fracture like a fragile mirror. In the darkest hours when the entire animal kingdom abandoned the failing Pride Lands, and Sarabi, the lioness queen, suggested leaving the desolation of Pride Rock behind, Scar's stubbornness knew no bounds. He angrily denied culpability for the Pride Lands' decline. His wrath-fueled descent into madness pushed the boundaries of leading his pride to the brink of annihilation. Scar's burning desire for the throne conceals a relatable motivation. In the human experience, sibling rivalry is a thing that we've all encountered. 
The complex interplay between Scar and Mufasa unravels a tale steeped in envy and complexity. Scar's jealousy, a festering wound at the heart of their chaotic relationship, revolved around Mufasa's wisdom and benevolence. Scar's stubborn refusal to concede Mufasa's superiority as a king, coupled with his willingness to doom their own kind in a grim fate, lays bare the profound depths of his resentment. What truly makes this narrative intriguing is that Scar's true craving may not have been the throne itself, but the validation that he was superior to Mufasa. When this elusive affirmation eluded him, his psyche crumbled into an abyss of irrationality and madness, leaving him beyond the reach of reason and sensibility. This is precisely where Scar's character resonates deeply with audiences, a testament to Disney's mastery in crafting villains. They possess the uncanny ability to immerse us in the twisted psyche of these antagonists, inviting us to transverse the murky terrain of empathy as we grapple with the moral complexities of their actions. With Scar, we can unmistakably discern his evil deeds, yet the tangled web of emotions that fuels his treachery occasionally tugs at our own hearts. In those sorrowful moments, we find ourselves at a fork in the road of sympathy for the dark maned lion. And as the tale nears its heart-wrenching conclusion, we are almost compelled to shed a tear for a character seemingly beyond redemption. It's a massive beauty that Disney captures so exquisitely. Scar's unparalleled achievements and even the depths of his failures catapult him into a realm of villainy that outshines many other characters in animated Disney films. He's a lion whose allure lies not just in his sinister schemes, but in the depths of his personal motivations, brought to life by the soothing voice of Jeremy Irons. Irons infuse Scar with an intoxicating blend of charisma and an unexpected hint of likability. It was a performance that etched its mark in cinematic history, catapulting Scar to the upper class of Disney's most iconic villains, an embodiment of evil perfected to an art. Now the true question is, can Disney ever go back to making perfect villains? Only time will tell. Until next time, I'll see you at the movies.